Welcome back to the South Park City Museum series on the Victorian Bar Room. This is the Leonard Summer Brewery still standing on its original location that it was on in the 1870s. Leonard Summer was an immigrant from Austria and he started his first brewery, which was built out of wood during the first half of 1873. The problem was in September of 1873, the whole town burned down and he lost it. Not to be deterred, he went to Denver. He worked in the barley business until he was able to come back. And by the end of the decade of the 1870s, he had built this large grand stone brewery. Now at the height of its production, it was cranking out 40 to 50 barrels of beer per day and was being shipped all over Colorado. We were at an interesting point in the history of beer uh, in the late 19th century. For time and memoriam, beer had pretty much been a local commodity. It was not something that really stood up well to packing up and shipping, but it was getting more possible by the end of the 19th century because of things like refrigerated rail cars. And so you have together this rise to some extent of national brands, but also beer being a very local thing, both here on the frontier and out in the east. Leonard Summer even built his own saloon to sell his lager from right here in South Park City, and this is it still on its original location. Now, his brand might be long gone, but the South Park Brewery is carrying on his tradition, and they have even done some really amazing work trying to recreate what the lager that Leonard Summer made might have been like. So I'm here today with Paul Kemp from South Park Brewing, and he is carrying on the legacy of Leonard Summer uh, in a number of ways, not just as a brewery owner in the town, but also rediscovering his beer. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so we opened about eight years ago, my wife and I, and um, we've lived up in the area off and on for a number of years, and uh, we're very excited to have an opportunity when we found this space to be able to open a, a pretty good-sized brewery in a very small town. Um, so we, we produce about 1,200 barrels of beer a, a year, and we've been open about eight years, and um, yeah, yeah, we, we don't have a specific style. We just like to experiment in a lot of different things, right? and um, yeah, just just have that nice flexibility that you have as a small brewer. Absolutely, so just like Leonard Summer in the 1870s, this is the local brewery right here uh, in Fairplay, Colorado. They're doing a fantastic job, um, and you've done some work on trying to rediscover what Leonard Summer did, right? What his recipe might have been like. Yep. So my wife and I were, were quite intrigued by um, the idea of, of a brewery being here in the 1860s through the 1880s, um, and then we're big supporters of the South Park City Museum, so just going there a number of times as we do, we, we got to go through the building and just see a lot of the different things, which was really cool. So in that process, I was intrigued with the idea of trying to recreate that, that beer style right. that was prevalent here before Prohibition. Um, and, that, and that recipe is uh, a surprisingly simple one, gotcha. actually. So yeah. um, doing some research and, and feeling that it would be very similar to what Leonard Summer would have done here um, back in the 1860s through the 80s, um, that it's a, uh, a pre-prohibition style lager, which is um, very different than what lo an American lager style is now, right. and what Budweiser did, you know, after prohibition. Um, so it is a little bit more body, or not a little bit more body, but it's um, a little bit higher alcohol, a little bit That's hoppier. It. Yeah. And and we used um, those ingredients that are only available here in uh, that were here in the United States at that time period. Right. Uh, that that beer just involved. Six row malt, which uh -huh. is a North American style malt that isn't done anywhere else. Um, and then corn. Wonderful. And corn. Then, and then corn. Okay, wow. Yeah. So with that, and then the hop that was pre prevalent at that time was cluster. Um, gotcha. So it was just a, a straightforward bittering hop um, that just, you know, gives it, gives it a nice character. Right. So one thing we found in whiskey during the Victorian period, certainly when it was getting rolling in the United States is that people, maybe from Germany or something like that, might bring the styles they had mm -hmm. to North America and then adapt to what was available here. Are you finding the same things in beer? Like, he's coming from Austria, right? Yes. So he, did he learn his style in Austria and then adapted it to the Colorado? Um, I, I think he did. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on his background before he was in the United States. Gotcha. Um, but, but I would guess uh, my, my premonition is that that was the case. That's how a lot of them would come over. Um, and then they would find those ingredients that are very similar. 
but six row was a malt that was only available here and it's not something that the germans actually look kindly on today they, they gotcha. don't they don't use that malt at all okay they, they think it's more of an inferior type malt right um, but it was it was what was available here and that's what they worked with and, and i think it makes a great product personally awesome. um but it, they would use a german style yeast is what i would would surmise and um and then yeah i mean that that type of grain was quite available corn was obviously quite available everywhere right. um but it, it, it makes a nice you know it just makes a nice beer i, I think it, it's a very popular beer when we do brew it people awesome. do really like it a lot yeah well, great. Anything else you want to add? Um, gosh, I don't know. Um, no, just just uh, thrilled that you took the time to come over here and, yeah. and really kind of talk about that. Um, you know, we we are doing uh, our party, kind of a pre-party that's in conjunction with the museum on the twelfth of August. Uh, we're going to release those in cans for the first oh, time. Oh, great! Okay. And we actually a neat side note was we used um, we recreated um, a label that. Um, the museum had actually found oh, in wow. one of the floorboards. Oh wow! So they found it under the floorboard, right? And they had a copy of that, and she, Erin, uh, had a copy of that. And we are basing our label based on that label. That's so it's, amazing. It's going to look really. It's got that old time feel to it, and, right. and what gives a little bit more authenticity to the whole uh, to the whole beer yeah. itself, which I think is really fun. Well, I'm sorry we have to leave before it's ready because that sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, these guys were uh, supporter. They were great supporters of South Park City Museum. They supported the fundraiser that we did uh, a couple of nights ago here. And after more than a year, uh, the glaringly absent uh, explanation of Victorian beer has now been uh, remedied with some intelligent commentary. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thanks for coming with us. And we're going to get back to uh, the museum. So the South Park Lager, the recreation of Leonard Summers' beer that he made here uh, in the 1870s and 80s, uh, it's not going to be quite ready yet before we have to head back home to our usual Victorian bar room. But we had to feature some of the craftsmanship of these guys. Uh, they are carrying on the legacy of Leonard Summer uh, making local beer right here in Fair Play, Colorado, and they're doing a fantastic job. This is, what do we got here? the Ranch Hand Easy Drinking Cream Ale. So a different style of brewing than Leonard Summer was doing, uh, but they're using some similar ingredients. They're even using some German hops, which I thought went along with this really nicely yeah. because Leonard Summer was, was from Austria, so. We also weren't gonna have this whole video and not drink any beer. Yeah, it's just, you, you probably should have a beer too. <laughs> Fine bit of craftsmanship. Mm. That's delicious. Creamy, smooth, mm -hmm. but not too heavy. Um, yeah, it's got just enough. I feel like to it with it. It's not too light, but it's not. It's still very refreshing. Yeah, it, you're, you're definitely drinking a beer and the hops, which we've already talked about. The great selection of hops they have in this. Um, I don't like an over hopped beer. That was never the point. You know, they're there for for some preservation to balance the flavor out. I don't want my taste buds scorched off by them. This is a very nice compliment. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. this is balanced craftsmanship. These folks really yeah. know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. This is great. So thanks to the South Park Brewing Company for sponsoring this video, uh, also for sponsoring the uh, the fundraising event that we did the other night right here in uh, in, in Rash's place in the saloon to uh, to help with the upkeep of the place and. Yeah, um, if you could go ahead and please subscribe to our channel, uh, hit like on this video. I know it sounds silly, but it really does help. If you click that little bell icon, uh, YouTube will let you know when we have new videos come out. And please go ahead, check out the description box below. We will give you some links if you want to help, uh, help out with the incredible preservation happening here at South Park City Museum. And also if you want to support the Victorian Bar Room, we really appreciate that as well. So, thanks for being with us and here's to you.